Welcome to a Legendarium special about the glass delusion, when lords thought themselves made from glass. In this episode, we will learn about why some of the great men of medieval and early modern Europe thought they would shatter if they moved the wrong way. The young King Charles VI of France, who took the throne at age 11, appeared to be at the start of a fine reign. He overthrew his corrupt regents in 1388, streamlined the royal bureaucracy, and lowered taxes. This earned him the nickname Charles the Beloved. However, in 1392, he traveled with a party of knights for war in Brittany. A mysterious hermit urged the king to turn back, warning that his knights would betray him. After the hermit disappeared, a knight suddenly dropped a spear and the sound sent the king into a psychotic rage. He began attacking the knights around him, accusing them of treason. By the time the knights subdued him, Charles VI killed four of their number. This marked the first episode of many which marred the rest of Charles' reign. Thereafter, the king endured spells in which he believed his body to be made entirely out of glass. To keep himself from shattering, Charles VI stayed motionless for hours, wrapped in piles of thick blankets. When he did move, he wore a special garment with iron ribs to protect his supposedly glass organs. Often, Charles VI refused to let anyone touch him, and he hid in cupboards to protect himself. This did not mark the last time that a European royal developed this odd fixation. Known as the glass delusion, it continued through the 19th century. This delusion spread to the courts, monasteries, and universities of Europe. Two notable 16th century doctors, Alfonso Ponce de Santa Cruz and André de Lawrence, told the story of an unnamed royal who believed he was not a human, but a glass vase. Other than that, the royal proved otherwise highly intelligent and well-spoken. The royal spent most of his time lying on a bed of straw to protect himself from shattering. Fed up, the royal's physician ordered that his bed of straw be set on fire and that the door to his room be locked up. When the man began beating on the door, begging for help, the doctor asked the royal why he did not shatter despite his pounding on the door. The ploy worked, and the royal begged, Open! I am begging you, my friends and dearest servants! I don't think I am a glass vase, but just the most miserable of all men, especially if you will let this fire put an end to my life. No word on how much longer the physician lived after his little experiment upon the royal. There are other recorded references throughout the Middle Ages and early modern era of people who believed they possessed glass hearts, feet, and heads. Others thought themselves to be glass flasks. Men seem to have had a certain predilection for glass buttocks, which would shatter if they sat down without a pillow strapped to their backsides. The doctor of one man, who believed he possessed a glass rear and beat his bottom in the hopes he would realize that his flesh grew sore from the thrashing instead of shattering into many pieces. This delusion made its way into medical books, like Robert Burton's Anatomy of Melancholy in 1621. Burton wrote of other men who thought themselves made from cork or lead or thought their heads would fall off if they moved the wrong way. Depictions of victims appeared in plays and literature, most notably in Miguel de Cervantes' short story The Glass Lawyer, published in 1613. In it, a brilliant young lawyer named Tomas Rodaja is the victim of a love potion that causes him to believe he is made of glass. He renames himself Vidriera, or Window, and gives honest counsel to many, though he speaks to them from a distance. Vidrera grew philosophical, arguing that glass men became better men, for one could see through any lies they told, just as one saw sunlight through a window. The epidemic of glass delusion largely dissipated by the 18th century, save for one notable case. One day in the late 1840s, Princess Alexandra Emile, the 23-year-old daughter of the recently abdicated King Ludwig I of Bavaria, 
walked through the corridors of the family palace. Her relatives noticed that the obsessive but intelligent young woman, who only wore the color white, acted even stranger than usual. Alexandra Emile walked sideways through doors and labyrinthine hallways, tiptoeing and carefully turning her body so that nothing would touch her. When asked what exactly she did, the princess explained that she had just discovered something remarkable. As a child, she apparently swallowed a full-sized grand piano made entirely of glass. It now resided inside her, wholly intact and would shatter if faced with any sudden movement. Though one wonders how the princess would explain the fact that the piano never shattered before. What could possibly lead otherwise lucid people to think themselves made from glass? Scholars at the time blamed it on melancholy, a kind of noble depression, often linked to the aristocracy and to genius. That might be in part because glass at the time ranked as a precious and novel commodity, mainly found in palaces, churches, and government buildings. People saw glass as a mystical or alchemical object, for sand and dirt became a delicate substance through the skillful use use of fire. Something base became something wondrous. Of course, only the rich could afford the glass flasks, windows, and baubles now available. It is also worth noting that persons described as melancholic in this time might be called paranoid or delusional today. Modern doctors have also pointed out that highborn families often intermarried with each other, which often led to incestuous marriages and thus high rates of mental illness among the aristocracy, which would provide a likely explanation for the glass delusion. And fixations with new materials have occurred throughout history. For example, before the glass delusion, some believed their bodies to be made of earthenware, and later during the 19th century, others believed believed themselves made of the wonder material of the age, concrete. And even in the digital age, some believe fanciful stories about the government putting microchips in their brains for some vague but surely nefarious purpose. And so perhaps the glass delusion has not fully broken yet. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.